So this is the Gravity Station, this is Gravity Station Beer Debate 2016. It's going to be live and I know there's going to be a lot of people here. It's going to be good. Oh, this is the back channel by the way. Back channel. I had two chickens. And look at the beers. I'll absolutely just show you what a hero this guy is. With a haircut as well. It should be it. My first of the day, Danger Moose by Sue. You can just see it over there, next to the logo, which is Gaza. It's six percent alcohol by volume. Don't show camera. Anyway, B plus plus. It is somewhat wonderful. Okay, let's Yeah, <laughs> Number two from Shorter. What are you drinking, Gaza? What is it? Ah, what do you think? Fantastic. Excellent. Who's the main brewer? Sue. Oh. I just do what I'm told. Oh. I always do. What a hero. And a smile. How's the uh, lively one? It's calmed down now. Good. It was, uh, we threw a little sugar in to get the gravity up a little bit and it went absolutely mental. So I saw the video. Yes. It basically was a bit scary. It's really ass. It's really ass. It's really ass. It's really ass. Oh, yeah. I thought I'd give it a show up. Yeah. It's a bit of a. It's five minutes on the internet. It's tapping out. It's down now. Good. Yes. Ah, no.
This is being streamed, I, I believe, live on Facebook as well. So if you have turned that half, you're actually out Christmas shopping, and make sure you stay the back of your head to the cameras. Try not to say anything libelous, flatness, or uh, swear, or any of those things if you could. Um, unless it's about large brewers, if you, know, you, you feel that way. Um, other than that, please contribute as much as you can this afternoon. I've got very little to say. I've got very little uh, um, pre-prepared because it's all about the kinds of things you want to ask and the kinds of things these people have to say in response. So let's let's briefly introduce, though I'm sure most of the panel, or if not all of them, will be um, well known to you. And I'll start on, on my uh, far left, and that is geographically uh, and not politically. Um, <laughs> We start with uh, Binky Reese, who is a uh, formerly an award-winning landlady, most, uh, I suppose, well-known uh, as being the landlady at the Lansdowne in Cardiff, which was, I think, Cardiff Pub of the Year two years in succession. Um, next to Binky is uh, an author and a journalist, um, Adrian Tini Jones, uh, perhaps, perhaps best known for his The Big Book of Beer. Uh, and if you are going on Christmas shopping later, I suggest I think it's out now. His latest book is where he's edited an, uh, an anthology of beer writing. That's right, yeah. um, beer in so many words. Uh, one for the Christmas stocking, and no doubt. Topped up with some lovely beers from, from in here. Uh, next to me is uh, Bill Dobson, who is the head brewer, brewer of Brains. Um, the brewery has been there for almost 35 years, and um, if, if, if press rumors are to be believed, are going through somewhat of an expansion in the next few years. And, Moving to a bigger brewery site, where Bill will tell us a little bit about that. Um, they, of course, in 2012 opened a craft brewery of their own. They've done apparently over 100 craft beers. Um, perhaps one of the one of the most um, successful, I would guess, is with uh, some dudes in the crowd today is uh, a collab with uh, uh, called Barry Island IPA with the Simon Martin, who's also here today. And sure, we'll have many many <laughs> questions to ask. Um, then on my right, uh, we have Chris Rowlands, um, who is the uh, man in charge over just across the way at the, at the City Arms, or, or as it, uh, if any of you are fans of uh, BBC's Ordinary Lines, the, uh, the uh, Ordinary Lines rather, the uh, set pub, I would imagine, <laughs> as it's uh, got far, far more publicity in recent weeks than it, than it should have had, even though being the BBC there wasn't any product placement, I guess. <laughs> Um, uh, to, to, further to my right uh, is Gaza Prescott of Hopcraft Brewing. Um, Gaza started brewing in Steel City, um, and uh, he, he, of course, is, is, is well known that um, uh, when he's made enough money, he's going to get somebody to dig out his, uh, his mash tun, and uh, I'm sure he'll be telling us if he's got to that point in his, in his, in his career yet. And on our very far right is, is, um, is Jen Merrick of, of Beavertown. Um, should Jen uh, Merrick of Beavertown, one of the, um, the larger uh, operations, will have plenty to say as, uh, during the afternoon. And uh, I'm sure your questions for Jen will be, um, will be well structured. Anyway, there we are. That's the panel. Uh, any who will go with whatever's in, in trend. But they'll do that with their clothes as well, but I don't yeah. think they're stupid. Yeah. Well, I don't know they're stupid, they're just very e easily influenced, I think. I mean, you take, take I a pub. Well, I think it's more than that. I think it's more than that as well, though. There are a lot of consumers now who are looking for something more local or more high welfare, yeah. you know, um, who are being more conscious about spending their money, not just going for the generic, you know, imported or, or whatever. I, I do think, though, it's still quite a small part of the market, it's still something that people are looking for. Strangely, I kind of, maybe it's an old-fashioned mentality, but I've always kind of been of the opinion of kind of what happens in London happens in the rest of Britain two years later, and it's... Um, well, the north of England about four. <laughs> <laughs> four yeah. I think Bournemouth is just arriving in North Wales. Um, <laughs> 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 But uh, my wife's from North Wales, I'm so am I. But, <laughs> but, but yeah, I generally speaking, like when when I was in, in London, when it pubs more, people were asking about whiskies and bourbons. But the truth is, you just don't know. I mean, there's a lot of money to be made if you can forecast that, but you, you can't. Who's who's willing to make a big spend, a big a big investment, and to drive that? Because uh, normally it is the bigger business that makes that drive, but puts, as you said, the spotlight on the smaller businesses that then can reap the rewards. All these gin, a lot of these gin makers were already in the business and making lots of money now because gin became... Yeah, 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 because yeah, of all yeah, 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 the big big business decides what's next, but then they 
decide what's next. They go with all the mass market. Then after that, all the small producers coming afterwards yeah, and yeah. basically establish themselves afterwards. If you they, want to, they yeah. missed the boat, but they will reap the rewards of continuous... Exactly. exactly. The, the thing we need to remember... <laughs> What are you drinking? Uh, our date mousse oh. in preparation for the second half. Oh, oh great. Okay, so uh, uh, we're back from uh, filling our uh, glasses or popping over to John Lewis with some gin baubles for the tree. Um, <laughs> I got yours, by the way. <laughs> Thanks very much, yes. Uh, some of the panel are going to try and ram down some hot molten lava cheese sandwiches, uh, courtesy of Mr. Crockwich. Um, whilst they speak, so I'll be going for the first two questions I'd like to have aimed at either Chris or Raven, <laughs> if you could, please. Um, just to make them more uncomfortable than they already feel eating sandwiches live on uh, on Facebook. And um, Chris, keep we did cheese out of it. We, we did see. How dare you? We have one, one comment on uh, on Facebook from uh, from Gordon Gout who said there's only one beer. So he's obviously missed mine or yours. I'm not sure which one. Of ours missed. Only one beer. To be, to be honest. Sorry, I can't mine this morning. <laughs> you just put yours off. <laughs> 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 this is it. This is it. Yes. Um, the second half, I guess, is, is one where it may get slightly more um, heated, and uh, I did mention it was probably not the best thing. However, it also goes back to, so when you say about Cloudwater, Beaver Town, and those type of breweries, you can say that they have to make good beer or it won't sell. Yes, absolutely. But to get into those pubs in the first place, they have to have money to get in there. Because if they're amongst a huge amount of other breweries that are also trying to sell to you and uh, they've got something more effective and that might be marketing and it might not be marketing obviously but a good brand good cans good bottles all of that is money you may have another brewery you know cl classic example of that would be hot craft actually it means like hoppy and out there and all the rest of it he's never ever at this point going to have uh, you know, a, an inlet to that same market that they are, because he doesn't have that money to have the marketing behind him. And they say they don't have marketing; they do have marketing because they have they have expensive, you know, designed labels, mar you know, branding. But you've got a brewer there who's sitting there making probably the same beers or better beers. They're never ever going to have that inroad to that market that those same breweries have that have the money behind them that have literally just walked in. They have literally just started. And just just to the to the regular fifteen, um, more money poured into into social media and, and of the internet than the newspaper industry. What happened then was, uh, as we all know, the newspaper industry tanked. Um, just this month, more money has poured into online video than broadcast TV. And when that tipping point happens, it basically falls completely falls apart. Um, so in the future, um, internet video is projected to, to skyward at four hundred percent, whereas TV falls off a cliff, if, if you like. Um, so my advice um, is, is to get more involved in social media and going forward, maybe video. Really, really look into into into. I haven't got a face for video. I haven't got a face for video. No, 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 Whenever they launch a beer, they make a small advert for their YouTube channel. I can't channel. Well, I, I, do you want new beers? I do every month. Yeah, but I'm, I'm just giving you an option. But what I'm just giving you an option. What are you suggesting, Simon, is that it's, 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 it's cheaper. Avenue. You know, Graz has said that he doesn't have, do it you have the millions yeah, to yeah. do a marketing budget. 
you could spend five minutes each yeah, time you finish a brew doing a, a little video. Yeah. 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 Uh, I don't know. Uh, no, no, um, Richard Burhouse from uh, Match Rock. I know Richard, yeah. Richard started off at My Brewery Tack, uh, which was an online bottle shop, uh, which did very well. Um, and then he moved over to open his own brewery. His experience from social media, because he started with nothing, yeah. a Yorkshireman with no money, um, he had experience from, from My Brewery Tack, opened up Magic Rock Brewing Company, and it was all social media, it was all forward thinking social media, and he built his brewery now from, from he's not a money man, he, 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 or maybe he might be I would now, think also he made a great choice in getting Stuart, and a lot of us writers yeah. knew Stuart from his period, so yeah, yeah. we went, sent loads of free beers and said, oh this is great, we actually knew Stuart and knew he was a good a brewer, because really yeah. I remember, you know, when I heard he was doing it, I got in touch with him and I went to see him, and you know, so yeah. it's, it doesn't always work like, I mean yeah, there are, there's a point, I'll let you, I, there's a point I wanted to make about bloggers and beer writers that is, mirrors what's happened with what you're talking about in the industry, which... I've got like, I, I just want to make. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I just wanted to say, so, so from where I am now, I'll finish up, is the magic rock for me in the top two uh, beer companies in the UK. Don't think they're beer, no one knows because they used to be. And, and the, the, now they have the, 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 the money to can, now they have the money to, but they, they started through social media, so just my well, point well, yeah, go, going forward, as I mentioned, with, with the vi online video passing, passing TV commercials in revenue, maybe video might be a, a, an avenue for you to, to, to really make hot crap. Because this be is great. Why don't people know about it? You're visible on Facebook. Oh, no, I still have name a lot. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but it's because we're still on Facebook. As Casper, not hot crap. I don't see hot crap. Yeah, that's a good point. I don't see hot crap enough in your social media. Yeah, I totally agree with you. You don't. You don't. I can ask I get a You need a social set. I do. Chris, good job. I get a wide kind of selection of customers from my place, so the old men who've never gone to Facebook in their life to kind of young bucksters come in and be a scene. And, and so many people ask me, you know, what's the difference between a brewer and a craft brewer? No. And the answer is all a computer, and I'm really proud of it. <laughs> <laughs> Beer's a taste of twigs and toffee. And I have a typewriter made of chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> With that, we've also got, again, it all comes out of money again. Some brewers can afford to employ wow. a social media person. Mm. But some don't, they just get... Ah, a lot of them. A lot of the big ones who we're talking about now have got dedicated social media people. It's like, a lot of the big... Again, the, but you they always get it right, Gaza. No. Oh, no, that's the no, the point. They've got somebody that who does all that for them. It's very generic and but, it's not personal. Whereas, uh, like someone like myself who's doing it for my pub, it's personal and you can respond to that customer because you. you know who's come in and you're responding personally to it. So yeah. I, I think I've got a lot of big, big kind of faceless corporate brands might get like a 0.1% kind of hit rate, whereas you might get a 10%. You can always tell. That's what I'm saying. So it does, it does have, uh, although you don't have to pay the money, you can get a better response mm. by putting and your own passion yeah, on the line. It doesn't take long so to plant a pizza. Really no, 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 you, you hit on it. Go on, go on, Jim. So, so Chris, Chris has completely hit on it because I follow various, various Twitter, um, you know, brewery and bar things. If the, the minute I see that it's um, a generic posted thing that happens every day. I scroll don't past. I scroll past. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I've always there. said to these guys and every, everyone else, is unless you're personally posting that on Twitter each day, no one's going to look at it. And so how, I still say, however much money someone has behind it to have someone, if they're employing someone, to do their social media, it has to be someone that has a passion for doing social media that will each day get up at seven, or wake up at seven and think, oh shit, you know, I, I need to, sorry. It's like, it's like a, I, I really need to say this is happening today. And they have to have that passion. Scheduling, you know, you have this scheduled thing, you can do a seven day or whatever, scheduled tweets or whatever, that's absolutely nonsense. And you can pay all you like to do that, you need someone that's there who is, uh, yeah, has an interest <laughs> in it and a passion for it. Who will, who will? Then there's a personal element for people reading those tweets or Facebook posts. And unless you have that, I'm sorry, but we all 
just scroll past them and we yeah, don't look at them. Yeah, each and every one of we us just has created, look at them. Yeah, each and every one of us has, has learned to filter out the noise because there's so yeah. much noise in social mm -hmm. media and newspapers. Um, huge, maybe yeah. ten years ago we wouldn't, and we believe what we read now. We don't. We're very yeah. cynical people. Yeah. And so you see all these feeds, and you yeah. just keep on scrolling. Of course so, you yeah, do. It's, it's you have to have something that jumps out. And you say, "This is a personal person. There's I someone talking person, to me, and I yeah, exactly, and that's the end of the be. And that's worth a lot. I have to say. So if you can get someone who's going to do that for you and who'll do it personally and they'll spend all of their time doing that for you personally, that's worth a lot of money. And yes, you could still buy that if you have loads of money. But if you're going to spend a massive amount of money on social media and you're just going to get a marketing company in to do that, well, so you, so as far as I'm concerned, you're wasting your money because none of us are going to read it. Well, no, I'm, no one's going to read what I'm it, saying it. is if somebody's tweeting about stuff and then I'm brewing so I'm busy, I can't apply to everything all day. I've missed out on like seven hours of replying and stuff. I'm well, okay, but I think that's a load of bollocks because yeah. actually, <laughs> it takes more no, no, I'm sorry, but I do seconds. because I think I'm personally, I think I'm, I'm, I get so many comments of, oh, I don't know, you know, when do you do any work? Because you're always on social media. Ah. Oh, well, that's a load of nonsense because I'm working and I'm on social media at the same time as just, I'm working. Just as well, just, just Bink, as Binky, I think can. You know, you know, the day you came to brew, Binky came to brew with us and brewed a fantastic bit of her pub. But she came to brew with us, but the whole time we were there, we were all on Twitter. You know, you, you, at the same time. Oh, on, hold on a minute. He's a male. <laughs> 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 A level of alcohol is good for you, and it's been proven, but that, that's ignored on the basis of oh, alcohol's bad for you, and it's, it's rubbish. And Regardless of the alcohol, it's the community, exactly. right? It's exactly. It's, it's the whole inclusiveness. It's the inclusiveness. Exactly. And drinking it that's by what yourself, on your own, with no one looking out for you. We're, we're, we're all part of a team. I, I make beer, these guys sell beer, all the guys write about beer. We're, we're all part of a team. We all need to get, yeah, apart from what the difference is, we have, we never dispute that. We all need to come together as part of the team and say, look, we, all, we do this as a team. We make beer, sell beer, do beer. We need to promote beer and drink as a good thing, not a bad thing. And that's what's lacking in Britain at the moment, in my opinion. With the danger of opening a further can of worms. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> do it, do it. Do it. Yeah. 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 Based on what all of the panel have said there about pubs versus drinking at home and so on, is minimum alcohol unit pricing a factor? No, uh, I, I, I wouldn't say so. Maybe it, it's, um, I don't actually, I'm not against cheap drinking at home, if I'm honest. It's, it's, that's, that's, that's not what I'm against. I mean, because yeah. Christmas is hard for everyone. Christmas is coming around now. I don't remember somebody having a, a cheap case of beer so they can actually enjoy their Christmas off. And finally, we're going to get time off for kids who are mental. I'm not against kind of good value beer at home, it's just supermarkets can sell it at such a price, but it's cheaper than the water. Yeah. Yeah. And, and nobody can compete with that. It's a loss for you. They'll, they'll make a loss right. on that case of, on that case of beer, right. because if you're going to go to a big supermarket, you've got to buy other stuff in your shop. I think that's the point of the question. This is surely the argument behind minimum pricing is that it affects the supermarkets more than it affects the price. Yeah, but I have to give the minimum pricing over minimum prices. I, again, I, I've only kind of read about the, the, the Scottish argument that it, about the Scottish system that we're looking to introduce, and I, I haven't really gone into it in any real length. I, for me, it needs to come from a taxation point. The tax levels need to be different for off and on, from me, that perspective. Yeah. Thank you, minimum alcohol pricing. Again, sort out the supermarkets. Make it more fair for people to be able to drink in a pub with other people than, rather than just, oh, I, Oh, I can have a beer tonight, but I can have a beer if I'm buying it from the supermarket and I'm drinking it at home. Rather than I'm buying a beer tonight, I can go to the pub and have two beers with friends in a social environment where we we legally have to look out for you. One, you're drinking a drink, the other, you're drinking a social exactly. We're the difference. Exactly. Phil, Phil, do you friends in the UK whether people buy your product in the supermarket or a pub or no. Is um, it? It's I'm a difficult one, actually, because... Yeah, well, the vast majority of our, our 
function is served and bought in a pub, um, and therefore, um, you know, we are a pub business at the end of the day as well as a brewer. So we would always sort of welcome something that supports that, supports exactly what these two guys, you know, passionately um, said about in terms of, of having that. So. I'm always fearful of this intervention that it, it starts to go wrong. So somehow it needs to happen. I don't know whether it's minimum pricing or different levels of duty or whatever. But you know, I hear the business rates of pubs and no experts are absolutely crippling. Why? That seems crazy to me. You know, so there seems to need to be something that you know maybe that's a, a, something that will come out of not being part of the EU if that happens. You know, but there still feel there needs to be something that actually addresses that balance. I need to speak. 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 I Industry, yeah. no, I think yeah. this industry needs relief, not yeah. just to say, yeah. Oh, we yeah. are half yeah. you got to get punished. No, I mean, that's that's just fine. Oh, there needs to be something that actually out. redresses balance and actually benefits so you'll see and growth. See, you, yeah. you, you need to promote growth in this market. We've seen a 20% decline, we need to turn that around, not just stop it, we need to turn it around. That money you see take the off. Social benefits of being in a pub, exactly. As well, yeah. Yeah. The money you take off the off trade goes to the on trade, not sits in the government's coffers. It's not just them. Exactly, it's just another form of tax and waste. So, yeah, yeah. You get money, the money gets put onto the, the, the entree rather than just. just the <laughs> uh, I would only say that when we started, so we, we started our brewery eight or I think eight years ago, and we could see then that the massive growth was the home consumer yeah. uh, market, okay? So, when I, I, I um, we, we cut ourselves off. From a massive market, because in our, you know, as soon as we started, we said we're not that bothered about. I, you know, I'm gonna. All of you are gonna hate me now, but we said we're not that bothered about the pub market, because as far as we can see, what we like to do is buy interesting beers and we like to drink them at home. We had small children, we couldn't get out much, and we liked to buy really nice beers and drink them at home. And that was our market. And, and so when we set off as a brewery, that's what we were doing. And all I'm saying now is that currently now, and I've just spoken literally just now to a few people, that there's no denying that the, the, it's changed, that people don't go out as we did. I did used to go out every night and go to the pub. They don't do now, but they want to they want to know that they can have some really decent beers and they want to have them at home. And I don't think that you can say I don't think you can say, oh you know, you know, we've got to keep the pubs going and yes, obviously we have to, but markets change and people change and what they want change. If it, turn, if, it, if, it tur if it turns out that people like sitting at home as a couple yeah. with their small children because yes. they can't go because they can't get babysitters, yes. blah, 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 yes. Mm -hmm. you know, if they want fantastic craft beers and they can go and get them in bottle, that's where the market will move. And you can't just say we have to champion the pub and, you know, and not look at the bottom side of things and the, and the more interesting side of things because that's not how it works. If things have moved on and people say that's what we want, then you have to work with that. And I'm a brewer, and I know I'm a brewer, and I know that I said what I'd most like to do is sit in my own house and have some fantastic bottles and drink them at home. And I hate myself for saying if that for people like Bindi. If you that in a pub and you know that it's a dad yes. or a beer, you're more likely to buy it off the shelf. At, and vice versa. Yeah, yeah. but both yeah. but, but, yeah. but, but, but <laughs> ways <laughs> works. Both ways works. Yeah, yeah. That was a bombshell. Yeah. Now, <laughs>